you've messed it up. You're stupid. Today's Daily Dose of Stupid comes to you via Ilhan Omar. That's always fun to have her on the show because apparently Ilhan thinks that Jesus is a Palestinian for some reason. So if you look at this tweet, this is one that Ilhan Omar retweeted from Omar Suleiman. I think I'm saying that right. It says, I was once asked by a relative who is a Palestinian Christian, why is the Christian right in America largely supports their oppression? Don't they know we're Christian too? Do they even consider us human? Don't they know that Jesus was a Palestinian? Okay, so here's the thing. I actually do support Palestinian Christians. I don't know of a single Christian that supports anyone's oppression that I'm aware of. And in fact, I and several other Christians here in America did a lot of work. And in my part, just donation, I didn't actually go over there because even though I would have have loved to have been able to have done that, it requires a certain level of expertise that I just don't have. There was a lot of ex-military involved in it, and I'll just say that. But when it came to, for example, the Syrian civil war, there were a lot of Christians that donated millions of dollars through, for example, Mercury One to bring a lot of those Palestinian Christians that were being persecuted during the Syrian civil war by ISIS and get them out and get them to a European country where they would be more safe. And there were a lot of efforts going towards that. And so I don't know of any Christians here in America that aren't very much in favor of Palestinian Christians' rights and and trying to preserve their right to religion. So first of all, I don't really even understand the premise. I don't know where all these Christians on the right are that are supporting the Palestinian suppression. I, I, I don't know. They're pulling that out of the blue or something. But since I don't really understand what they're trying to talk about here, let's talk about this overall idea that she was retreating that Jesus was a Palestinian. Look, Jesus was not a Palestinian. There is no evidence to support that anywhere in the scripture. Jesus Christ was a Jew, a Jew living in Israel. And he lived there at a time where Roman, uh, there was Roman occupation, but he was about as Jewish as any person can be. You can look in the Gospel of Matthew, and you can look in the Gospel of Luke. And both of them, from both sides of his family, even though he didn't actually share any DNA with his earthly father, Joseph, but on both sides of his family, they are both the descendants of King David and of Solomon and of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You can trace that lineage all the way back to them. And so because of that, there really is no debate that Jesus was about as Jewish as a person could get. On both sides of his family, insanely Jewish, they all were the descendants of Jews. And he was also living in the kingdom of Judea, the southern kingdom, which was Israel at the time. And so this idea that someone who was born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, and spent a lot of his adult life in Capernaum, He was a practicing Jew from a religious perspective. He followed the law perfectly. The only human being to ever do that followed the law of Moses, adhered to its principles, uh, went through the Torah school and had, a, am sure, a bar mitzvah, just like every other Jewish boy that came of age. He was culturally Jewish. He was genetically Jewish. And he was religiously Jewish in every sense of the word. You can't come up with a way that he was anything but a Jew. And yet, there are people like Ilhan Omar that are trying to suggest somehow, in some way, that Jesus was Jewish, or that Jesus was Palestinian and not Jewish. This is like saying that MLK or Gandhi were Irish. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, and it's so obviously untrue. So a rabbi named Michael Dixon took issue with this and also took issue and and sort of took a stab at a New York Times article that was kind of suggesting the same thing. Now, there was, when he was referencing this, a New York Times article by Eric V. Kopage that claimed that Jesus was a Palestinian. I think that we talked about this very uh, briefly on the show. This would have been, I don't know, about two weeks ago. 
And so this piece came out by Eric Kopage that was essentially suggesting that Jesus was a Palestinian. Now, I do want to give the New York Times credit. Since then, the New York Times has actually come out and apologized for that and said that we made a correction. An earlier version of this piece said that Jesus was a Palestinian. It has been corrected to say that he was not. And what's crazy about this is, if you're looking at the New York Times piece where this was published, there is no indication here whatsoever that it was an opinion piece or an editorial. They just basically let it print as though it were fact. And so they suggested that Jesus was Palestinian. They did go back and correct it. But the point is that originally this was what they said. Now, where he's drawing this from, there is actually a small kernel of truth to it. And I want to address that right now. He says in this article, As I grew older, I learned that fair-skinned, blue-eyed depiction of Jesus has for centuries adorned stained glass windows and altars in churches throughout the United States and Europe. But Jesus, a Jew born in Bethlehem, presumably had the complexion of a Middle Eastern man. So there is an aspect of truth to this. We often see a depiction of a long-haired, long-bearded Jesus who typically has very fair skin and blue eyes. Why? Because that's how he was depicted primarily by the Catholics. And I'm not saying that this was something that was evil, but it is historically incorrect. And he was given somewhat of an Italian look. And that is because, of course, the Vatican is located in Rome. And we see similar things. There was a, a famous painting, for example, of Peter where he was working on his, his portion, his contribution to the New Testament where he's writing at a desk, which would have not been, it was sort of a medieval-style desk, which wouldn't have been available to him at that time. And so this is something where there's sort of historical inaccuracies when it comes to these paintings and depictions of Christ and the apostles and other biblical figures. It is accurate that he would have had the con uh, the complexion of a Middle, Middle Eastern-ish kind of man at that time, probably olive skin, kind of closer to Mediterranean, you know, not, not uh, black like we would consider, some, something that would have looked more like someone who was a descended from an African culture. It would have been something more similar to the Mediterranean area, somebody that was certainly darker than he's usually depicted, but wouldn't necessarily be a black person either. And probably would have had much shorter, uh, probably would have had a much shorter hair and beard just because that was the culture of the time. So, but nonetheless, uh, this article also claims that Jesus would have been black, which is also incorrect. And that's one of the things that I wanted to bring up. Jesus wouldn't have been a white guy, but he wouldn't have been black either. Like it says, he would have been more Middle Eastern looking. And so something probably a little bit closer to that would have been more accurate. But the real question, and we need to get to the root of the problem here, is why are they claiming this in the first place? Why do they care what race Jesus was? Why do they care what skin color Jesus Christ had? Well, it really, really boils down to this. The intersectionality crowd... They believe that there is something moral or immoral about race, that essentially your opinions, your thought process is more valuable and more, what's the word I'm looking for here, valid if you are of a certain race. And they also see humanity as broken up into racial teams. And so they want as many people on their team as humanly possible. They would rather Jesus be a black man because in some way that makes him more moral or more valid as a thinker or a historical figure in their mind. Now, does it make any sense? No, but that really is what they believe. That's the problem with this intersectionality thinking. It puts the emphasis on the skin tone and the racial genetic makeup of a person rather than their ideas or their thoughts. I don't care that Jesus wasn't right, white. I really don't. I don't care if people want to depict Jesus as something other than white because he wasn't white to begin with. The fact that he died and shed his blood and gave his life for mine is really the only thing that I care about. The fact that I still have his teachings preserved in the gospel 
that I can learn from them, that I can continue to model in my life by them, and that I know that he loved me enough to give his own life as a sacrificial offering and to be able to forgive me of my sins, that's really the only important thing that I need to know about him. You see, it's Christ's teachings, his words, his beliefs, his ideas, and his actions that are important to me, not his race. His race doesn't matter. Would it would he be any less my savior or would he be any less the son of God if he were black? No. I'm just saying it's historically inaccurate. If Jesus had come to earth as a black man, and who knows, maybe maybe the complexion of Middle Eastern people was a little bit darker then and he was pretty close to a black guy. I can't say that I know that for sure. It seems unlikely based on our under, understanding of history. But if that were the case, wouldn't change anything. Wouldn't matter to me if you were white, black, Asian. It doesn't matter. If he were any of those things, as long as the actions were the same. Now, his genetic heritage does matter because it was prophesied and because he had to be the, the offspring of King David. And so it is important in that sense, just because it was God fulfilling his promise to the Jewish people and to Abraham and the covenant he made with him. I'm just saying that what's really important about Christ is that he was God in the flesh, that he revealed himself to us and he became my savior, the race is not important. And what's so ironic about this is the people that are really hung up on what race Jesus was are actually living in contradiction to the message that Jesus taught, which is don't judge with your eyes. Look at people the way that God looks at people, as people created in his image. And that's the reason that we see in the epistles that Paul says that there is neither Jew nor free, or there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. Because that's really the message of the gospel. That's the reason that we as Christians all sit together and worship together. And it was really this idea of the races intermingling being a good thing originated from the scripture. It originated with the church that Christ gave his life up for. And this idea that somehow you want certain people to be of a certain race because you feel like that makes your team more legitimate or that there's some moral good or bad that is associated with skin color or associated with race, that's the belief of the intersectionality crowd. It's a secular belief and it's tribalism and it's actually old and outdated and not something that Christ would have approved of, something that Christ actively preached against in his ministry when he was here on earth. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.